New Atlantis by Emma Louise White. 13th of April, 3030, New Atlantis. Cora, wake up! These dolphins won't feed themselves, shouts Papa. Coming, Papa! I shout back, whilst hauling myself out of bed. Yes, you heard me correctly. We look after dolphins. That's my family's business, ever since the big move anyway. Cora, get down here now! I quickly pull on my light blue t-shirt and jeans, switch my oxygen helmet from sleeping to awake, and dash into the kitchen. Finally, sighed Papa. Eat your breakfast, then go feed the dolphins. I left your pancakes on the table, Cora, says Mama. I eat up quickly, then go see the dolphins. Sky, Indigo and Violet are our three performing dolphins. We travel around New Atlantis performing with them. It means I'm constantly changing schools, and let's just say it straight. It's not easy being the new girl, but I love my family, so I do what they need me to do. I live with my papa, mama, and grandpa. Grandma Caroline died before the big move. I never even met her. Grandpa talks about her all the time. His stories are the best in New Atlantis. After I fed the dolphins, giving Sky my favourite, a few extra fish, I brought Grandpa a cup of tea. Morning, Starshine. Morning, Grandpa. Here's your tea. Thank you, Cora. Nothing like a cup of tea to start the day. I sat down on the side of Grandpa's bed, looking expectantly at him as he drank his tea. I know that face. Ready for a story? Yes. Today I'm going to tell you a different kind of story. Not the usual pirates and fairies. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about my life before the big move. 14th of January, 2092, London. It was a balmy winter's evening. All the world leaders were together in Buckingham Palace discussing the future of humanity. The temperature on Earth was rising rapidly and soon the surface would be too hot to live on. Humanity had years to relocate. Many people believed all hope was lost and that the human race was heading to extinction, but Professor David Williams had a plan. Most people thought he had lost his marbles, but he presented the world leaders with some astonishing evidence that they had to listen to. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Professor David Williams, and I am here today to present to you my solution for our current catastrophe. It may sound crazy, but I beg you to listen. I suggest that we move civilization underwater. Although the current situation is dire, everyone in the room laughs. Elizabeth Wilson, the President of the United States, shouts sarcastically. Okay, Professor, tell us your theory, because I don't know about you, but I can't breathe underwater. Everyone laughs aloud again. Well, I have created a helmet similar to an astronaut's that allows us to survive underwater, he replies. Zhao Huang, the representative of China, says, Show us this helmet! Professor David Williams signals to his assistant, who brings in a human-sized water tank. David puts on the helmet and jumps into the water. He remains there for ten minutes before he is helped out. For the next few years, humanity starts mass-producing the helmets and making preparations for their move underwater, also known as the Big Move. 24th of July, 2092, Birchwood Ranch, Norfolk. Caroline, the news is on! Caroline leaves her spaghetti bolognese cooking and sits down beside Jim to watch the television. Welcome to BBC News. Today, it has been announced that all men aged 18 to 55 who are fit to do manual labour will receive a letter assigning them a job to help with Project New Atlantis. Jim mutes the television. They sit in silence until Jim finally says, It looks like I'll be leaving the farm for a while. Yes, it does, Caroline replies solemnly. 13th of April, 3030, New Atlantis. Grandpa, you were a farmer. Yes, and how I loved it. The smell of fresh grass every morning was glorious. Absolutely glorious. What happened next, Grandpa? I had to go work as a builder underwater. I was one of the first to try out the helmets. You mean you didn't always have to wear a helmet? No, and let me tell you, life was far better without them. 
putting it on for the first time was the most bizarre experience of my life. 15th of September, 2094, Birchwood Ranch, Norfolk. Jim came home after a long day's work to the empty, dark, lonely house. Nothing had been the same since Caroline had passed away a month ago. His son had his own wife, so Jim found himself alone most of the time. Humanity was moving underwater at the start of the new year. Jim was going to move in with his son and daughter-in-law in the east of New Atlantis. He was looking forward to some company again. He put some of the previous night's leftovers in the microwave for his dinner and sat down in the kitchen. 13th of April, 3030, New Atlantis. Oh, Grandpa, you must have been so lonely. I am glad you came to live with Papa and Mama. Me too. I wish I could see the surface. Well, I'm afraid it looks completely different now. We can never live up there again. It's such a shame. If our selfish ancestors had listened to the science about climate change, we could still be living there now. Why didn't they, Grandpapa? Ah, they were too concerned about business and profit to care about the future of our amazing planet. That is heinous. I can't believe it. I know, sweetheart. We are the ones paying the price for their actions. Never seeing the sunset, never seeing the waves crash, never seeing the trees grow. It is disgraceful, but there is nothing we can do about it. All we can do is make sure we don't destroy this new underwater utopia of ours. Thank you.